Hello, it's Tutas, and for once I decided to do something helpful for the Dark Souls PvP community. This video is about parrying, and we will be featuring the parry against different kind of attacks with different kind of parrying tools. This video will include running attack parries, roll attack parries, and finally some setup parries. In the end I will include some real combat situations and try to summarize everything we learned. You can also skip to the part you're most interested in, if you don't want to watch the whole thing. So, let's get started. In this first part, we learn to parry many different running attacks. When parrying with medium shields, against faster weapons, try to press the parry button as soon as you see your opponent start the attack animation. Against slower weapons, let the attack animation go just for a teeny tiny moment before pressing the parry button. When parrying with parrying dagger, the same rules apply as on the medium shield. So against faster weapons try to push the parry button as soon as you see the attack animation start. Against slower weapons, wait a bit after animation starts and then push the parry button. With parrying dagger you can also parry quite later than with the medium shield and still get the parry off on most cases.
When parrying with small shields, the timing is a bit different. Against faster weapons, try to do more predicting and try to press the parry button just as you think your opponent is starting the attack animation. Against slower weapons, push the parry button immediately you see then start the attack animation. When parrying with fast weapons, try to predict your parrying so that when your opponent's attack connects to you, you are at the end of your parry animation. When parrying with slow weapons, you should aim to the same as with the fast weapons and try to aim your opponent's attack to connect when you are on the very end of your parry animation. Also, you need to be a half second early on your prediction. Thank you. 
When parrying with ultra slow weapons, you should try to time your parry so that your opponent's attack connects when you are on the end of your parry animation. You have to do some heavy predicting with this one, since parrying when you see your opponent's attack start will be too late. When parrying with the curved swords, the timing is quite the same as the parrying dagger. Against faster weapons, push the parry button as soon as you see the attack animation start. Against slower weapons, wait a teeny tiny moment after your opponent attack animation has started and then push the parry button. You can be quite late at the timing and still get a successful parry out.
When parrying with the bare fist, same rules apply as the parrying dagger. The speed is also the same. Against faster weapons, press the parry button as soon as you see the attack animation start. Against slower weapons, wait a bit after your opponent attack animation starts and then hit the parry button. The timing must be spot on with this one. In this second part, we learn to parry a few different rolling attacks. When parrying with medium shields, push the parry button in the very end of your opponent's roll animation. When parrying with small shields, push the parry button in the middle of your opponent's roll animation. When parrying with the parrying dagger, push the parry button in the very end of your opponent's roll animation. You can also succeed in most cases, even if you press it when your see the roll attack animation starts. When parrying with bare fist, push the parry button as soon as you see your opponent roll attack animation start.
In this third part, we learn to do a basic setup parry. In this final part, I'd rather summarize everything we learned. Before I start talking, I want to make clear that this is all my own speculation, based on my own experiences. I'm a human being and I make mistakes, so make sure you yell at me in the comment section to point out all of those mistakes. So, what did we learn from all of this? As most of you might know by now, weapons in Dark Souls 2 have different speed spots meaning you have to hit your enemy with a certain part of your weapon to deal any satisfying damage. Some weapons have more strict sweet spots than others. For example, with spears and halberds the sweet spot is in the very tip of the weapon. This sweet spot system also seems to affect the parrying, since it seems a lot easier to parry just about any weapon if your parrying tool connects with the sweet spot of the weapon you're parrying. This is most noticeable when doing setup parries since standing very close to the spamming opponent rarely gets you anywhere. Getting a few steps of distance from your enemy results in way more solid parrying success. We didn't test too many setup parries on this video, but based on my own experiences, you can set up parry just about any R1 spam if your distance is correct, including katana and curved sword spam. Also, I've noticed that it's a lot easier to parry just before your opponent's third swing. You can also parry before the second swing, and this would be recommended because few people swing their weapons three times in a row, but the timing is more strict. Just for clarification, you cannot parry card break attacks or jumping attacks, although you can parry the special fist type jump attack. Let's talk a little bit of which parrying tool you should choose. Based on my experiences, if you're planning on doing absolutely no blocking at all, you should go with either the parrying dagger or a curved sword. I don't know if I was just more comfortable with the parry timings with these weapons, or do they actually have more active parry frames, but my parrying success is noticeably better with these two compared to the other parrying tools. The bare fist seems to have the same speed as the parrying dagger, but feels like it has less active parry frames. I would imagine parrying with rapiers have the same speed and active frames as the parrying dagger, but I didn't test them, so don't take my word on it. With these parrying tools though, you obviously cannot set up parry. Although, you can try to sneak in between opponent's swings to land a parry, but obviously you cannot block the first hit with them. If you want to do both, predict parries and set up parries, I think small parrying shields are the most flexible choice since you can also do some blocking with those, and the active parry frames felt noticeably bigger compared to the medium shields. The startup animation of the small parrying shields is a bit slower though, compared to the, let's say, parrying dagger, so you need to do a little bit more prediction with those. If your sole purpose is to set up parry, medium shield is a fine option for you, since those tend to have a higher stability and damage reduction compared to small parry shields so it's pretty risk-free to set up parry with them. However, doing prediction parries with medium-sized shields seem to have more strict timing compared to small parry shields, curved swords or parrying dagger. You can also do pretty viable prediction parries with fast weapons like longsword, but these have noticeably less active parry frames, and most of those active frames seem to also be in the very end of the animation. If you're feeling really hardcore, you can also start practicing the timing with the slow weapon parries like Zweihander. But let me warn you, the wind up for this type of parry is huge, and in order to land successful prediction parries with these, you need to see your opponent's attack come from a mile away in order to start the animation in time. The active frames on these parries don't seem to hop either. So, what are the easiest or the hardest weapons to parry, you ask? 
Katana running attacks are probably the attacks I parry the most at the moment, since people use those a lot. And pressing the parry button the second you see your opponent stop their attack animation seems to do the trick, with most of the parrying tools. Weapons like maces and axes are also relatively easy to parry since those have more wind up in their running attacks. Fists are pretty risk free to parry also since you don't have to worry about how close you are to your opponent. When it comes to the setup parrying, Great Sword's one handed spam is by far the easiest one to parry. When it comes to the hardest weapon to parry, I have bad news to some of you. It is the Halberd running attack, aka spin to win attack. At the moment this attack is painfully hard to parry, at least for me, probably because of the odd attack speed and the sweet spot the weapon has. It is also one of the most risky things to parry, so just take my advice and roll backstab that attack instead. I apologize that we couldn't test all the weapon types on this video. Our weapon selection was pretty limited and for example reapers and lances are missing completely. But from my own experiences I can say that those are not the hardest ones to parry. Although parrying lances can be quite risky business. Lot of the timings on this video can be used against weapons with similar speeds. Also, if it does matter, my adaptability on this video was 20. That is kind of a nice mid range that people will usually go with. In the end here, I want to thank the wonderful master dude for helping me making this video and thanks all of you guys for watching. Hopefully this video will be helpful for some of you. See you in Drang Lake. Take care.